This is Matt Allington, and this is my entry into the Data Analytics Challenge for the Microsoft Data Insights Summit 2017. I've elected to do the Complex Data Preparation Challenge, and the analysis therefore will be on the Hawaii Tourism Board. So there's a number of standard questions, I'm going to set about answering those now. And the first question is, where are people visiting from? I have a number of pages in my report, so the first one I'll take a look at is this arrival summary map. You can see here that I have a slicer on year, and I also have a graphic indicating the proportion of where people are coming from by country. So North America by far is the uh, biggest country with 65% almost of all arrivals. And on the right hand side I've got um, a table so that it's easy to see the ranking by country as well. The second page I have here is arrival port by country and on this particular page you're able to see by country where people are actually coming into in Hawaii. I've also got a tree map here showing uh, the top five countries. By clicking on this tree map you're able to get a more detailed view of the from to uh, transit here. And of course you can do that by any country as well just using the country of origin slicer at the top. Um, at the moment it's unfiltered by year and you can select any particular year and in fact you can do uh, the reverse, you can pick a particular destination and see where the people are coming from. The next thing I'm going to look at is whether there's been any interesting shifts in what regions um, visit Hawaii in general. Now this particular visual doesn't allow drill down but you can see that there's been a big decline in Europe and also Japan and um, and of course, if you want to look in more detail, it's quite easy to swap out the region with a country. Now, once you find a country that you'd like to look at, let's say Germany, for example, it's possible on this chart to come over and click on Germany and get a much finer detailed view of exactly what's been happening over the period. On this next chart, I'm able to have a look at the trend by year and also by month so we can see what's happening at a granular level. You can see that 2007 was a peak year and if we click on 2007 we can see the underlying um, arrivals by month. You'll also note that 2007 was a strong year yet 2009 was actually a low point and so you can take any two years or multiple years in fact and come over to the other chart and just multi-select and then you can do a direct comparison on those years. This chart here shows the visitor days trend by year and you can see a similar pattern here where we had a peak in 2007 and a decline in 2009 and I also have a trend here by the arrival island. However once you drill into the data there is a lower level of detail which is otherwise not visible. If we have a look at the domestic trend you'll see that the domestic trend pretty much follows the, the shape of the overall trend. However, if we look at the international trend, you'll see that there actually is a long-term decline from about 1996 down to 2009, a long-term decline in the number of visitor days for international travellers. And you can see that reflected across all of the arrival ports. And this is a more detailed report showing the arrivals by port. You can, of course, slice here by country. And on this particular chart on the right-hand side, it also shows the average day stayed per arrival. And so while we actually saw an increase in the arrivals by uh, various countries at this point in time, there was actually a decrease in the average days stayed. But then we had a kick up in the average day stayed uh, into the period where the uh, arrivals fell away. There was a table that was available within the source data that had highlights for 2015. I loaded the entire table and put it into this hierarchy slicer so that you could go down and select anything that you want. So here's the total visitors, the number of visitor days, and you can slice by country as well. One of the questions was in what months were the busiest, so you can see that here by visitor days and total visitors. And also they asked what were the reasons people came to stay. and there is a purpose of trip here and at this point you notice that the warning comes up to say that you need to go down to a lower level in the hierarchy and so here are the individual reasons that people came. But to answer this question I actually created another tab, Purpose of Trip 2015 and here is the, um, the, the source of the traveller coming from which country and here are the purposes of the trip and here is the, is the slice by month. If you have a look at Japan you'll see that Japan peaks in August whereas if we go to Australia for example you'll see that the peak is in September 
and of course every country has a slightly different profile and here are the reasons that people are visiting. The last specific question was how much did people spend and I've loaded the spending from the same highlights in 2015 file. I have a slicer here where you can switch between spending per day and spending per trip, total expenditure etc. We have a month breakdown here and also it can be sliced by island and country of origin. So that's my submission for the Data Insights Summit competition. If you'd like to learn the skills that I used in developing this report, you can have a look at my Power Query training, which is uh, the skill you need to be able to load the data. There's a link at the bottom there. And you can also take a look at my uh, data modeling training, which is my online version of my course, Learn to Write DAX.